Try to get some of that healthy clickbait. Uh, this is one day after the Oscars, and I want if you if you if you do Oscar reaction video, I want you to get a hold of me. So let's talk about last night's ceremony. It was another ceremony with no host. I'm gonna say boo. Um, I have looked forward for 17 years. I follow the Oscars I, just as much as I love seeing a new actor or a new director crowned. I like seeing a new host crowned. Uh, when Jimmy Kimmel or Neil Patrick Harris or you know uh, Steve Martin gets crowned, it's like. Wow, this is so great to see to see this person have their title Oscar host next to it, and no one is getting that honor. And there are so many people you could do: Sarah Silverman, Tiffany Haddish, Kumail Nanjiani. I think Tom Hanks would make a great host because he's like the president of the Academy. Um, just, it's such a shame um, that we're not using hosts. Chris Rock is is exactly right. It's Twitter culture, and if it's about moving the show along. They could easily just ha limit the host to a monologue, but still make him the official host. As for the ceremony, um, I love the... Uh, they do tw little tweaks every year. I loved the supporting the actors, mono the, the, the clips of the actors, but not just little clips. Like uh, the year that uh, Little Miss Sunshine departed and the Queen were in it, they had like clips that were like... And that was like one of the very first years I followed it. They had clips of the actors that were like five seconds long. For uh, 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 Olive, Abigail Breslin, Little Miss Sunshine, they just showed her screaming, and that was it. Now they're really doing really long clips. I loved when they did the um, uh, the screenplays. They showed you little snippets of the script. They've done that before, but they don't do it every year. Um, they also probably had some unwise choices in speakers. Penelope Cruz uh, is well known for being a collaborator of uh, Pedro Almodovar, and she presented a best foreign film award to the guy that would beat Pedro Almodovar that night. Michael Douglas. Uh, Kirk Douglas, he's setting a lot of ripples for Hollywood because he's kind of the last of his cert uh, of that certain era. He is he was politically active and he was active while in life. He wasn't the best of his era, but he's the last of his era and Michael Douglas could have given the in memoriam and given like, just as they did a big thing about John Hughes, who, like, who the hell is John Hughes? They could have done something more with Michael Douglas. Um, there were also some other odd presenters, but there were some also really great combinations. Maya Rudolph and Kristen Wiig, I was laughing. I was LOLing. I'm going to give that a thumbs up. Where's the camera? Thumbs up. I'm going to give a thumbs up to uh, Will, Le Will Ferrell and Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Um... There was also a kind of a rapping thing in the middle. There was they sometimes do random things. They had they had movie music montage. I'm really interested in movie songs. I think the montage was poorly edited, so thumbs down there. But uh, I like the idea because uh, like where did they start and and uh, end each song snippet if they only have you know five seconds per song? Um, then they ended up with Eminem, which, kind of random, but, you know, uh, Eminem was once famous for singing a duet with Elton John, and both of them were there that night, so that was kind of cool. Um, I actually think, uh, I, I thought it was hilarious. It's, uh, there's, there are some people in the music, in the audience, who are like, oh, what is this strange rap music? Like, Adina Menzel was like, oh, I don't, like, she was, you could look, see her reacting to being like, okay, I have to, like, awkwardly bob my head to this rap. Um... But I think that was pretty great. The best song selection this year was, I'm going to say thumbs down, that was a snooze fest. Um, I felt like if you did like a parody of Oscar songs, like Oscar bait songs, you, and like, you know, and called the album Oscar bait, you could like put all five songs of that in this category. There was no winner among them. Elton John probably didn't sound like the best, Elt uh, the be like one of his better songs. It felt like he just kind of mailed that one in just so that he could be eligible for best song so the Rocket Man could win something. A little known secret of the best song category is that sometimes some of these best, some, sometimes um, a lot of movies shoehorn a song at the end credit just so they have a chance of winning another Oscar, which makes the film more marketable. As for the wins tonight, um, I think that... Um, I was pretty surprised by a few of them and maybe a little disappointed. I think 1917 should have definitely won Best Production Design. I would have liked to... Have, uh, I think the Best Animated Film should not have been Toy Story 3 or Toy Story 4 or whatever the hell it was. I don't even see those Toy Story sequels. But... And I'm not... I can't judge it, but my understanding is that they just kind of want to... They just clicked off the boxes without seeing all the Best Animated Films. 
Klaus was the clear winner from what I from what I've heard. Um, best documentary, I think uh, the American Factory is a really good one, and the acceptance speech was absolutely terrific. Um, Laura, I think Scarlett Johansson was the best in her category for Jojo Rabbit, but Laura Dern, um, she's been kind of a favorite, and I love her personality. I love that she's the daughter of Hollywood personality. She's had a great filmography, um, and you know, Joke and Phoenix. I think it's a victory for the Joker winning is the victory is that you don't have to be defined we don't have to be defined by our past we don't have to we don't have to like lionize past roles this guy played the same role as someone else who was nominated and people weren't comparing it to the last thing to the lat to the last person who played the Joker on screen they just said this is its own thing and we're judging it on its own merits and I think that's a very healthy way to look at it uh Brad Pitt I I never thought of him as ever winning an Oscar but um and I don't know if that's the best role of that category or of the year. I mean, I, I've seen Anthony Hawkins, so I'm going to say no. But, you know, it's okay. Uh, Renee Zellweger is a great comeback story. And, um, you know, she's definitely an actress who we want out there because she's one of the best in the biz. And it's kind of odd that sometimes we forget a lot of female actors. Um, I think Ford vs. Ferrari on editing is kind of an unusual choice. But, I mean... It's okay to spread their love around. I was... I think Parasite is an amazing film. 1917 is also an amazing film. So I don't think there's necessarily a clear loser. But I do... Generally in these situations, I really do like best director picture splits. Because it feels like two films won. And it must be a little disappointing for 1917 to only win two awards when they've swept the whole season. 1917 was one of the strongest... Uh, performing films on the awards cir circuit of the whole decade and possibly the whole century, and for it to, uh, w and uh, it, as long as Sam Mendes is happy with his BAFTA and his Oscar of 20 years ago and his Golden Globe and everything else, and uh, you know I hope he's not disappointed. I would hope that they give a hug for it for him. Uh, as far as the award speeches, um, well, uh, the guy who went who went for James Mangold. Um, the sound editor, uh, I, I particularly liked him. I particularly liked the Ford vs. Ferrari editor. And these guys who are saying James Mangold is one of the greats. It's actually not that far-fetched that James Mangold is a great director because he did direct uh, 310 to Yuba. Awesome film. Where's my thumbs up? Awesome film. He directed the uh, Logan, which he was nominated for, one of the best superhero films to really transcend the genre. He directed Walk the Line. He directed Girl Interrupted. He's already won... Oscars for um, Angelina Jolie and Reese Witherspoon. So he, it, that's actually not that bad. I, Boon Hong Joon gave a speech that a lot of people uh, really thought was wonderful. I do think it's great to praise your nominees, but you should praise them all a little more evenly. He spent about three minutes of time on Martin Scorsese, one minute of time on uh, Quentin Tarantino, and about five seconds apiece on... Sam Mendes and Todd Phillips. Sam Mendes is a guy. Sam Mendes is a guy who uh, was the front runner of the night, and he didn't even give a whole full sentence about 1917. For all we know, he didn't even see the film. Now, on top of that, we have um, Joaquin Phoenix just rambling. But I mean, his heart was in the right place. It's at least better than winning a lot of awards. It's interesting. I kind of miss the version of Joaquin Phoenix who hated <laughs> awards rather than the one who wants to lecture us about cow insemination. But, uh, yeah, I guess I'll give a marginal thumbs up. Renee Zellweger, hey, I grew up at the time when Renee Zellweger was like the hottest actress in Hollywood. Not hot beautiful-wise, to objectify her, but she was, her career was red hot. And she was a little bit disorganized and scattered. I'm happy to see her win, but I wish she rehearsed her speech. She must have a 95% chance of... She must know she had a 95% chance of winning. She must have won a bunch of other things before. Fortunately, I didn't see any of them, so... She must have given that speech before. I don't know how that happened. Um, and, you know, Laura Dern made me cry. Uh, Brad Pitt gave an amazing speech. Taiki Wahidi, Well, he's, all, he's a very funny guy. You should see his backstage speech. It's great. Anyway pretty pleased with the Oscars. Thanks so much. Click, click, click.